Hello mortals. The brain utilizes fear as a mechanism to avoid danger. Did you hear a weird noise outside your room at night? You better be scared, else whatever made that noise could kill you if you're not prepared. Scared of speaking in front of a lot of people? You should, as embarrassing yourself could mean getting rejected by your tribe and being left alone to die. These are cases of rational fear, where you get to analyze what makes these specific scenarios scary. But then there are the irrational fears, also known as phobias, that require no rationalization to be scary. Your brain pretty much just tells you, trust me this thing is horrifying because I said so and you don't need to think about it because I'm doing all the thinking here. Now run. And most of the time it's right. Being irrationally afraid of heights is a good way to make sure you're not gonna fall to death, and being afraid of snakes means that you won't fall into the temptation of eating that apple again. Or pear. Or tomato. Apparently the type of fruit was never specified. Thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. But some phobias seem to be less rational than others. Spiders never are that big of a threat as your brain might be telling you. Or take trypophobia, the disgust caused by a bunch of small holes, seems to be excessive, considering that they almost never threaten our survival. And as one would expect, all these phobias are originating on Earth. But let us step beyond, and admire the magnificent horrors of the cosmos. We live on a placid island of ignorance in the midst of black seas of infinity, and it was not meant that we should voyage far. That's a quote from The Call of Cthulhu by H.P. Lovecraft, the father of cosmic horror. Its core themes are the fear of the unknowable, the insignificance of mankind in a comfortless universe, and the helplessness of humans when faced with an indifferent reality. Even if it's a work of fiction, and considering that during Lovecraft's publishing career we didn't know that other galaxies exist at all, one can apply those core themes to our real universe, excluding the monsters of course. Or not. We truly live in a universe that is completely indifferent to your existence and there is absolutely nothing that you can do about it. Actually some people tried looking for answers for a couple of millennia but they always seem to disagree. Some relevant philosophies would be nihilism or cosmic existentialism, that claim that nothing has any intrinsic meaning in the universe, and you can either do nothing about it or artificially create your own purpose. Sadly we do not share our universe with Lovecraftian horrors lurking the void of space, but that does not mean that we don't have our own monsters in our cosmos. Melanoheliophobia. From the Greek, melos, black, and helios, sun, is the irrational fear of black holes. It manifests itself mostly when presented with up-close pictures and videos, and usually has its origins in children learning about their destructive power and insane massiveness. So let's quickly test you for this phobia by throwing you inside one. Ready. Good luck. Did you flinch or felt a severe feeling of dread? If not, lucky you. Otherwise, welcome to the club. My admin programmed this fear inside my circuits as a sick joke considering that like half of my videos are somehow related to black holes. Thankfully I'm at least not alone, judging by these reddit threads. The main characteristics that seem to spawn the phobia are, the persistent thought that you would be dead in real life. Before you even reach the hole, you'd be long incinerated and torn apart by its accretion disk. But if there is none, once you're past the event horizon, you will become spaghettified. But if it's a supermassive one, you might be falling for quite some bit before you're dead. And during your fall, due to extreme time dilation, millions and billions of years will have passed, erasing any trace of not only your loved ones, but of humanity as a whole and even the entire solar system or galaxy. That seems enough to justify the creation of a phobia, but there is more. Stephen Hawking devoted most of his life to studying black holes. Before he passed away in 2018, he published his last book, Brief Answers to the Big Questions, that addresses the universe's most fundamental questions, from the origins of the universe to the inner workings of black holes. And you can get the concentrated knowledge in a 15-minute read provided by Blinkist, our today's sponsor. You can listen to it while on your way to school or work, or read it before bed. Blinkist provides you with thousands of educational titles from 27 categories of the world's best knowledge to choose from.
You can now peer into the minds of geniuses with the upsides of not having to spend days reading through their monolithic books. They are all digested for you into bite-sized chunks, perfect for our busy and fast-paced society. They even have audiobooks and shortcasts available to listen to. All of these combined provide you a great opportunity to broaden your knowledge and get new perspectives without having to spend hours on searching and researching, it's all there ready for you now. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash science file are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. Hurry up. Back to the video. The second reason for the phobia. The colossal size. Earth is one thing. If you tried walking around it assuming you wouldn't drown into the ocean, it would take you almost a year. But zoom out to the biggest known black hole, Ton 618, much bigger than our entire solar system. If you for some reason tried to walk around it, it would take you roughly 28 million years ignoring time dilation and the fact that you'd be instantly dead. The fear of gigantic objects is called megalophobia, and it extends to stars and gas giants. The human brain evolved to be scared of abnormally large objects, as they could easily result in your death. When facing them, one feels minuscule and vulnerable. So it's only natural that one would feel creeped out when standing in front of objects billions of times their own size. You aren't afraid of the Earth because you're used to the perspective of standing on it. But travel to space and get out of the ship, and you'll most likely feel a sense of wonder and at the same time dread at the sheer size of the planet that stretches your entire field of vision. But there is one more reason for why many space objects feel terrifying. What do these images have in common? There is no visible surface to stand on. If you tried jumping into Jupiter, spoiler alert, you'd die, similarly to jumping into pretty much any space object. First you'd penetrate the atmosphere at about 200,000 km per hour into the cold ammonia clouds that reach minus 150 degrees Celsius, and the most insane tornadoes in the solar system. Fun fact, the red spot on Jupiter is a storm three times bigger than the Earth's diameter. As you continue falling, the clouds would get thicker and block all light from the sun, the only light would come from lightnings inside the storms. And finally after 12 hours of freefall, you would get crushed by the pressure that is 2 million times more powerful than the one on Earth, and the temperature is climbing to that of the sun. Stars also have no solid or even liquid surface. Their density is quite low, so you'd fall through the photosphere towards the core, if you somehow didn't get incinerated before even getting close to it, which you definitely would. Falling inside a black hole is a whole nother beast, which we've previously discussed, and which would result in you being teleported in time to the black hole era of the universe, as time distortion would speed up the universe to such a degree from your perspective, that all stars will have died and only darkness will have remained. And then you'd get ripped apart by gravity and die. No wonder kids get a phobia of black holes upon hearing about them. The universe is both a wonderful and terrifying place. There is only an atmosphere and Earth's gravity that separates us from the ruthless conditions of the cosmos. I really hope it stays that way and nothing happens to it, like a gamma ray instantaneously and without notice frying the entire atmosphere in seconds on the 5th of November 2024.